Hello there, Cancers. Uh, when I'm not feeling at my best, okay? So I apologize. Um, without further ado, let's go into this reading here. Um, I am using the Spirit Song Tarot deck. This is a wonderful deck for those of you who um, are wondering. This is a new deck, and uh, the imagery is just amazing. And there are a lot of messages that came through with this um, deck. Messages, like verbal messages, rather than um, images. But either way, um, first of all, I see... Um, it's um it's a, a scene near the window okay so there's like light streaming through a window and as I look up I see like um, little um, boxes and it, it's mirrors okay they're like very very small um, there are like 10 15 of them or a lot of them they're kind of um, tied up with like fishing wire which is a clear wire right it's very thin it's very clear it's translucent and they're hung from the window so these um frames with mirrors on them they're kind of spinning okay and the light is streaming through them and hitting them and it's bouncing off the light so i see a lot of just reflections reflections a lot of reflections a lot of um mirroring energies and a lot of uh, just you know bouncing back and forth like deflecting bouncing as well as you know the mirror spinning so I it, it's just that's what uh, the message I was getting is there's a lot of reflection there's a lot of contemplation there's a lot of mirroring energy and as most of you are aware anytime we are dealing with another person uh, you know, the, the communication, the interaction, it's a two-way street. And so if we're approaching somebody and they seem very standoffish, they seem really just, you know, um, they seem as if they don't want to interact with us. We're going to get defensive. We're going to recoil. And we're going to kind of like mirror that energy back to them, right? And because you guys are a water sign, you guys are deeply, very sensitive you're very sensitive. You also pick up nonverbal cues really well. Okay, water signs are so adept at that. And so you you sense people's energies, you sense people's attitudes, their tone, the the the, the words they use, everything comes out as if you're able to read their true intention. And so I feel like there is a significant relationship in your life and this is somebody that you're dealing with interacting with on a regular basis and you have a strong emotional connection with and I feel like the way in which the two of you are dealing with each other I, I see almost like this dance with the mirrors okay I'll reflect back whatever I'm getting back so it's like you're not approaching each other with your true authentic self you're mirroring exactly whatever they give you, and they likewise. They're mirroring whatever you give them. I feel that you're not able to show your true colors or your true intentions um, because you're deeply sensitive. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to feel rejected. You don't want to say something and have the other person shoot down your ideas, shoot down your plans because, you know, you're sensitive. But I feel that the person that you're dealing with, kind of like that sun streaming through the window, it's, a, it's vibrant, it's fiery, it's passionate. And this is somebody who's very verbose, who's very opinionated, who's, um, who's very, like, in a normal interaction, they are very authentic. You know, they, they have strong opinions, they have strong ideas, they have plans. And they're able to verbalize all of these. But when they're interacting with you, because they see you very skittish, very, um, I want to say, slow to act, slow to move, they feel rejected because this person has a lot of pride, okay? So I feel like two people coming together and one person, you, deeply sensitive, and the other person has a lot of pride, and both parties are very afraid about getting hurt because, you know, one person is like saving face 
And the other person is just like emotionally, I don't want to get hurt. And so we have a little bit of a stalemate here where there's lack of communication, meaningful communication, where there's a lack of coming, being able to come together, being able to talk about things, being able to reconcile, being able to resolve issues, resolve problems, because both of you have your walls up and both of you have your own hang-ups and your own blockages. That's disallowing the two of you to come together. So lots of mirroring energy. One person might say, you know, like, hey, do you want to go out on Friday? And then I feel like they might say that to you. And then you kind of hesitate. You're thinking, you know, you're, you're, you're pausing and you're thinking like, what do I have to do Friday night? Is there anything important? But because you take that, that step back and because you hesitate without telling them, give me just one second, let me think about, you know, what I have um, to do on Friday night. Because you're not able to tell them that, they see you hesitate, they see you taking a step back, and they mistakenly think that, oh, this person, you know, the cancer, doesn't want to go out with me, doesn't want to see me, is not interested. And so they back off, and they might say in a very flippant way, oh, it's okay, I'm actually busy anyways. Or they might inadvertently say, you know, um, Joan and Mike, my other friends are going to be there. You should come with us if you like. And then they dash off because their pride has been hurt because they feel rejected. So I just feel like there's so much miscommunication. Um, and we need to be very aware. And, you know, this is not on you because, like, the, the energy is mirroring, right? I don't feel this is entirely on you, but I just feel that there is a strong need to communicate, okay, a very strong need to communicate. Look at this roar. This is the five of wands fighting, arguing, uh, not being able to agree on things, but look at this roar. This is really powerful. This is somebody who's very, very pissed off. This is somebody who has so much to say, and yet, when you look at this card, you, you, you feel the frustration, right? You feel the anger. You feel the need to communicate, and yet we're looking at it, and, and we don't hear any noise, right? So this is what I mean. I just feel like there's, there's so much that needs to be hashed out. There's so much that needs to be said. And look at this. One person is screaming, and the other person is recoiling. The other one is conflict avoidant. The other one is like, you're being uncouth. You're being too melodramatic. You're being, so, so like one person has so much they want to say, and the other person, I feel, is being dismissive. And so, this spread is ripe with miscommunication, misunderstanding, um, not being able to put ourselves in another person's shoes. That's what it feels like to me. They with you or you with them. And whenever I see that happen, whenever I see a situation or the energies that uh, where one person is not able to understand where the other person's coming from, and one person is, you know, accusatory, like, oh, that person's so melodramatic. That person is such a drama queen. That person, like, blows things out of proportion. That person is, um, you know, too, too impulsive. Whatever it is, like, these accusations... Um, every time we do that, I, I feel as if the other person, you know, whatever anger or, or really strong emotions come out, it's rarely just about one thing, right? It's a series of things, of life experiences, a culmination of all the things that could go wrong. And it's kind of like, you know, on that day, it's a, 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 a the, the perfect storm condition happened. You understand human behavior. You understand things really well in a very intuitive, um, automatic way. But when you're dealing with this person, I feel like, you know, you have your mind made up about them. They are a certain way. 
And so conversation is at a standstill because in your mind, they are this way and nothing they can do will ever change that. And so you don't want to listen or you tune out or you uh, dash out the door. You don't want to, you, you know, it, it, it seems to me like it's, it's dismissive. Okay. And once again, it, it's a mirroring energy. So they could be doing the same thing to you. And so one of the things that we can do to kind of de-escalate this, this, this tension as we progress through, you know, January, we have here the hangman and we have the ace of swords. So let me talk about this because this is pretty much your outcome. This is like the saving grace in this uh, spread. Both amazing cards, okay? The Ace of Pent, uh, I'm sorry, the Ace of Feathers. This is the Ace of Swords, okay? Understanding. And this is not about understanding how something works, understanding how events transpired, understanding what happened. It's requiring you to look at things from a different perspective with the hangman. Okay, looking at life upside down. So, one of the things that I was taught about my job, which, um, my, my main job, was um, a lot of the times we are very quick, you know, when someone gives us a piece of information, we're very quick about tearing it apart, dissecting it, and proving it wrong, right? The way our mind works, and uh, in using the scientific method, we want to test theories, test hypotheses, and we want to, you know, given a fact, we think of all the ways in which it could be false. But the work that I'm doing right now is the opposite of that, because given a piece of information, we think about all the ways in which it could be true. So we operate under the assumption that it could be true. And then we ask questions around it, to either debunk it or to prove it, uh, to prove its uh, its truth, and so I feel like there's a lot to be said here about a situation where you understand it, you understand how it works, you understand what it encapsulates, you understand what it's about, but it's really forcing you to look at things from a different perspective, and and really questioning, you know, do you know all there is to know about the situation? Is there something that you're overlooking? With this Ace of Feathers, this is almost like, you know, the, the, the goat is really cute, right? Like in this depiction, he's very adorable. But he's also got his head held up. It's like um, turning up your nose at something. It's like um, being a little bit... I want to say presumptuous and being a little bit like, oh, I, I, I already know that. So it's really asking you, you know, um, is there something that you might possibly overlook? Is there something about this situation that you're not 100% aware of? Is there some missing information that could potentially, um, that could potentially dissuade you from a specific course of action or a specific opinion? Is there some major, major piece of information that could turn this situation around? Because I feel like at the very last moment, there's going to be something coming into the picture that will turn the situation around. A last piece of um, information, a last ditch attempt, because I feel like somebody is trying to communicate with you. And then I also feel you could also be dealing with somebody who you're trying to communicate with. And they, they are, they're like, I already know. I already know everything. So they could appear very haughty, very um, like, like a know-it-all, or very much like very fixed in their opinions. They've got their minds made up, and nothing can persuade them otherwise. And I feel like at the very last minute, it's like a very last ditch attempt to turn a situation around. Okay? It, it brings about clarity. It, it slashes through all these assumptions and presumptions we have about the situation or the person. And then I also feel like it's going to throw a wrench in the works because it's, it's taking into account a factor 
a piece of information that you have not thought about prior. And because of the, that, it, 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 it turns the situation around. Okay, I, I do feel it's for the better. I don't feel that you have to worry about that. Um, there is another message or another image that there was another image that came through when I was shuffling. So let me talk about it really fast because I feel like it's echoing the same theme, but um, maybe it might apply for some of you. I see this baby. He's a little boy. He's a toddler, like really young toddler. So, you know, he's at an age where he can crawl around and can make noises and stuff, right? So, like, probably around two or three. He's sitting on a couch, and the it zooms into him sitting on a couch, and he's so adorable. And um, he, I'm kind of seeing his profile. He's looking this way, okay? He's on the couch, and mom and dad are kind of walking past him walking back and forth, possibly um, packing, maybe moving, um, renovating the house. Either way, they're very busy. They're walking back and forth. And he's looking at all this activity around the house. He's looking at mom and dad pacing back and forth. And um, he he's confused. You know, he's just like, why does it feel so tense in here? Why does it feel so busy? Why is everybody see, why do they both seem so worried? So keep in mind his whole world revolves around his mom and dad, okay? So babies are designed in such a way that, you know, they recognize their caretakers. They recognize the person that will feed them, the person that will tuck them into bed, the person that will protect them from harm. So, you know, it, it's an evolutionary development where you, in utero, they, they recognize their mother's voice, their, their father's voice, if the father's in the picture. Um, and they recognize, you know, for sheer survival instincts, they recognize faces that of the people that will take care of them. And so he's looking at the faces of his parents, and I don't see their faces. I just see them kind of like walking back and forth near him. And they seem worried. They seem distressed. And he's just like, he, he feels anxious, but he's a baby. He doesn't know why. And then he's kind of scared a little bit. He feels uncomfortable. He feels scared, so he reaches his arms up. And when babies do that, it means they want comfort. They want to be held. They want to be close to you. They want to either soothe themselves or even sometimes soothe you. And mom and dad is just walking back and forth. They're too busy and wrapped up in their own things. And they don't notice that he's crying for attention. So he does that. And then he gets ignored. And then he, you know, starts making noise with his mouth. And he gets ignored. And then he starts crying. But I don't hear any noise. I don't hear any sound. I don't hear the sound of the child crying. I just saw this scene where there's a situation that um, where somebody is like, reaching out, trying to contact, trying to communicate, they might not have the vocabulary in which to communicate with you. And um, so the scene cuts out. So I feel as if it's asking you, you know, is there somebody in your life that you're not giving enough attention to? And, you know, God forbid, I, I don't think it's a, like a toddler, but I feel like it's somebody who is not able to communicate, who might not have the vocabulary, who might not have the linguistic skills, who might not be mentally aware of their needs and their wants. They, they just know that they feel uncomfortable. They just know that they want to break the silence. They just want attention. They just want you to focus on them. And you're very busy going about your day. And, and uh, th this is where I feel like, you know, you feel like the other person might be a little bit melodramatic. But I feel like you're dealing with someone who's very deeply intuitive and very deeply sensitive as well. They The way in which they projected is... Um, they're very proud, okay? So when they want something and it's shut down, then they recoil and they never ask again, okay? So that's that's what I'm sensing. Um, I feel for many of you, I feel for many of you, there is a situation here 
it's a like a love relationship. Um, it could be family as well, but I feel more so love relationship with a significant other where one person might want to be, you know, intimate and the other person's very busy. And then the, the person that wants to be intimate asks like, hey, you know, let's spend the night together. And the other person's like, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. So just imagine if someone is like coming to you with their all, with their, their hearts on their sleeves, wanting to have, you know, like, like making their, themselves very vulnerable, wanting to be intimate with you in like a very vulnerable way, emotionally, physically, and just giving you their full being and you're telling them, oh, I'm busy. And you don't follow up with more explanations. You don't follow up with like a hug. You don't follow up with like a promise. Oh, we'll do this next time. You know, it's very hurtful. So I feel like somebody might be dealing with this. And then it, it happens time and time again. And it's hurtful. And, and you know, you, you become callous. You stop asking. You stop wanting to be intimate. You become resentful. You start wanting to get back at the other person. You start wanting to do things and say things and behave in a way so that the other person knows and, and sees and understands that, oh, I don't need you. Because that's what I'm feeling here. We have here the Four of Wands. This is a family situation, but what I'm seeing here is this is turning away. And then I have here the Empress, very bashful. You know, um, bunnies are very skittish, okay? They're, they're very shy innately and very warm and cuddly. But in this situation, it's like you come at somebody with your all and without an explanation, it feels like somebody's rejecting another person. And then over time, so that same scenario, over time, you know, the, the one person has been turned down many, many times. They, they, they become callous. They become, they become resentful. And then when their partner is in a tough situation and their partner needs them, then they're just like, oh, you're being melodramatic, you know. You should learn to take care of that yourself. So I feel here there's deeply entrenched resentment <clears throat> and deeply entrenched resentment that is coming to the light. And I feel that this conversation, there's going to be a communication breakthrough. Thank God. Because everything is done so subversively and so like passive aggressively. It's really frustrating for me to see this and, and you know, and be in it. It feels so uncomfortable. So everything has been under the radar, has been done in a very passive aggressive manner, has been, you know, like, um, it's like fumbling around for your keys. You're frustrated. It's dark, you can't see what you're looking at. You're trying multiple sets of keys to get into your house so you can, you know, rest and, and recuperate. And you're fumbling and it's cold outside and it's like a combination of things and it just piles on and, and it's really uncomfortable. And I feel like it's so subversive under the radar looking on at a situation, wondering what the other person's up to and yet not willing to communicate like, what are you doing today? How was your day today? Just like silent treatment, I feel. Silent treatment, passive aggressiveness, silent treatment. Everything is done under, under the radar. It is so uncomfortable for me to read this. I hope you guys are not dealing with this because as a water sign, I can't imagine this being a comfortable place for you to be in or a comfortable relationship for you to have to endure, you know, we don't have to endure relationships, but that's what it feels like here. And then I also feel like somebody is very prickly, the porcupine. Somebody is very prickly. Um, imagine slight. You could give them a compliment and they're uh, defensive, you know, 
And they're just like, what do you mean by that? And even though you're giving them a compliment, a perfectly sincere compliment, so I feel like there's just so much room for misunderstandings here. And like I said, the saving grace is that there will be an uproar. There will be a, a, a communication breakthrough. And the moment when this happens, I just would urge you to let them talk, hear them out. Let the train, the, the stream of consciousness pour out because you're dealing with a situation where it's not just about one thing that, uh, that, 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 you know, created the misunderstanding. It's a series of things, layers upon layers of BS, you know, um, evasiveness, resentment, uh, missed opportunities, just like layers and layers of it piled on and they need to get that off their chest. They need to unload and they need to, they, they want you to understand. It's not just one thing, cancers. It's a myriad of things. And I, I, I just feel like you're dealing with someone who is not sophisticated with the way in which they express themselves okay so let's just say and 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 um, let me explain what that means I don't want cross watchers to get offended but I, this is what I want to say especially if you're a cross watcher and you're a fire sign um, lack of sophistication when it comes to communication and this has nothing to do with the way you which you communicate but it has something to do with the way in which you communicate with your Cancerian person. Does that make sense? So this is not about, you know, you being a bad communicator. This is just you communicating in a way so that the Cancer person can understand. So let's just give, I'll give you an example. Um, I'll use Cancer and Sagittarius because that's a really hot duel right now. Okay, so Cancers and Sagittarius, they're walking around. Okay, it's a... It's kind of like a, a, a cool day, not too hot, not too cold. And the Sagittarius is, you know, Sagittarius is dressed really well. And, and Sagittarius is expecting for it to get really cold. So Sagittarius wore her winter boots and her winter coat walking around with Cancers. Cancers, you know, of course, checks the weather and knows that it's not going to be too hot. So Cancers... Uh, is dressed appropriately, sneakers, a light jacket, and, you know, is feeling really comfortable. And then Sagittarius is walking around, getting a little bit hot, getting a little bit, like, um, warm under the collar, and they're realizing that their boots is not appropriate, and they're realizing that it's hurting their feet, and they're realizing that their wool socks is burning up. And so they're, they're getting frustrated, and everything is just, it seems like because of their own physical discomfort, everything that day just becomes bad, okay? They could go to like the nicest restaurant and then Sagittarius is just frustrated and it's like, I don't like the food. I, I feel hot. I, 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 I feel tired. My feet are uncomfortable. And so you feel like the Sagittarius person is very melodramatic and the Sagittarius person is doesn't want to ruin the fun, doesn't want to say, let's go home, doesn't want to say, like, you know, um, it, it's like there are so many things the Sagittarius person might not know what is really bothering them. And what is really bothering them could be as simple as, you know, the my shoes are too hot, my socks are too hot, I'm not dressed appropriately, I'm wearing this big coat and I just want to throw away this big coat so I can be comfortable. But the Sagittarius might not know how to verbalize all these things, all, the, all of these factors that are affecting their emotional state. And so when they are upset, they just lash out, like they're frustrated and they're angry. And they're, they're picking at the things that's right in front of them rather than getting to the root of the problem. Okay? And so I feel like, you know, this lack of sophistication when it comes to being able to know exactly what's bothering us what is the root of the problem and like I said I mean in their defense it's like 
it's a lattice, like a lattice on a pie, layers upon layers of things over the years, just piling on. And, you know, I feel like one person, I feel like this is a long-standing conflict. And it's deeply entrenched, and it's uncomfortable. But you know, um, I had a situation where we had I had a like a major confrontation, and what I did ahead of time was to pray that both sides could reach an agreement that is favorable. And I kept that in mind during the confrontation, and at the end, everything worked out. You have to set the intention that both sides can, you know, see the light, both sides can sympathize, and then both sides can come together with a lot of compassion during this conversation. And I feel like everything will work out, you know, the, the best outcome for all, okay? The intention has to be set without expectations. So it's not about, you know, I want to win this argument or I want them to see how much they've made me suffer. It's not about that. It's about, you know, doing what's best for both parties and approaching a situation with compassion from both sides. I will leave it at that for you, Cancer. I hope the February reading brings you a lot more closure and a lot more peace. I apologize if this sounds negative. It's what I'm seeing, so I have to relay what I see.